it up. Hello, everyone. I'm going to give a talk about applying simple statistical machine learning models into approximate query processing engines and the comparisons are made against the state-of-the-art AQP engines. So let's begin with my talk. So in the era of big data, how long does it take to execute a single query? This is an example. For a data set of 2.5 terabyte, it takes more than 2,000 seconds to execute a single query, regardless where, whether you are using Hadoop or Spark. And also, a large class of the queries takes the following form. Select aggregate from table one where x between lower bound and upper bound. And also group by is optional. And you can also have many different group by, different uh, selector operators. And such queries are very popular on many data sets, like the Internet of Things, sensors, KPIs from the cloud deployments. So the current solutions include the online aggregation, data sketches, and also the sample-based approach, which is a dominating approach. To make, a sam make a samples, there are several sampling techniques, including uniform sampling, stratified sampling, and height sampling. This method has been deployed in many uh, AQP engines, including VerdictDB, QuickR, BlinkDB. But the sampling method, method do have some limitations. For example, they have limited support for aggregate functions. Usually, only count some average as supported. And uh, uh, for other aggregate functions, it's not so clear about this. And also, it is still very time consuming. To guarantee a very good accuracy, usually a large sample is required, which means the space overhead is very high. And also support for join, support for nesting are problematic. So, and also uh, depends on whether the samples are generated during the query execution. Sampling method falls into offline and online sampling. The offline sampling makes the assumption that the workloads are knowing or partially knowing so that, so that they can prepare the samples in advance. So the speed up is high. For the online sampling method, they make no assumptions about the workloads and the samples are generated during the query execution. So the speed up is low. But both methods are complementary and helpful. Offline sampling is used used for the predictable workloads, while online sampling is for the rest. So here comes questions. Can we do AQP while ensuring very small query execution times? Maybe several milliseconds? Very small stats and high accuracy, regardless of the size of the set and also with low mining cost. And with DBS, we show that the answer is yes for a large class of queries. DBS rest relies on simply, simply, simply relies on the statistical, statistical machine learning models, and uh, it is built over samples of the tables. And uh, one benefit of the DBS is that it does not rely on big data platforms. And usually a single-threaded DBS outperforms a multi-threaded AQP engine. Here with DBS, we can show that the models can build upon small, very, very small samples. And uh, as samples can generalize nicely, it can guarantee very good accuracy. And also the model state is small, and the query res response time is very small, and also the model training time is acceptable. We do extensive experiments. The sensitivity analysis shows the impact of query range and the sample size. Um, and also we show the accuracy for different aggregate functions. We also show the performance for group by queries and joins. 
Here is the architecture of DBS. There are three meta components. The sampling, the samples module, which makes, which relies on reservoir sampling to make uniform samples from the bank end. The models module, which contains all the machine learning models and the catalog module, which store information about all available models. So when a query comes in, DBS will search its catalog first to check whether there are models available and it can be used to give the prediction. If not, it can go to the bank end server to get the results. So what models can be used to give the prediction? We use regression models, density estimators. For regression models, there are various models, like linear regression, polynomial regression, and a decision tree, and even more complex the ensemble method. Here we choose XGBoost for its overall performance. For the density estimators, we choose the kernel density. So we have the models, how to predict the answer. For count, sum, and average, it is very straightforward. For example, for average, the, the average of y could be approximated as the expect, expectation of regression on x. So we just need to do integration over the densities and the regression models. For variance, it is um, roughly, it is almost the same. And for percentile, we only need to we only need the density estimator and uh, we need to calculate the, the reverse of the cumulative density function. Then we can get the um, p percentile. So more, more support for SQLs. To support multi-selection, multi-variate selection, we just need to do multi-variate integration. To support group by, we build mo models for each group by value. Uh, if there are too many groups, we create model bundles to organize the models. So, for example, each model bundle stores maybe 500 groups, and uh, we store the model bundles in the SSD. To deserialize and uh, compute the aggregate from the models, it only takes around 100 milliseconds. To support for join, we choose a simple way. We just can calculate the drawing table and we make samples of that so we can build more models for it. So here is the experimental setup. The query types, are we, the data set we use includes the TPC DS data set as well as several data sets from the UCI machine learning repository. And the query types including includes the synthetic queries and also complex TPCDS queries. We made a comparison with VerticeDB, BlinkDB, and MonadDB. Here, uh, VerticeDB use, always use 12 cores, while with DBS, we run only on one core only. Yeah. So here is the sensitivity analysis, shows the effect of query range on the accuracy. Mm. Here we can see that for a small, the query range here we choose is 0.1% to 10%. We can see that for a smaller selectivity, we notice higher error. This is expected. And also, we can see that for query range of 10%, the error is below 1% for all aggregate functions. Here we, sh we show the effect of sample size on the accuracy. The sample size we choose varies, between t varies from 10K, 100K to 1 million, 5 million. And the query range we choose is fixed at 1%. We can see that as the sample size increases, the error decrease. decrease. And uh, when the one million sample is used, the error is below 1% for all functions. And we also analyze the space overhead. As, un as the samples are deleted after the model is training. So 
the space is space overhead is one to two orders of magnitude less than the sample based method. So here we compare the performance of DBS against uh, vertex DB. The sample size we choose are 10K and 100K. Um, we can see that DBS always outperform vertex DB in accuracy. And uh, we can see that for a small sample size, a 10K size, vertex, the sample based method can give a very bad prediction. While for the model based method, we can give very good accuracy. And uh, for the query response time, as uh, only models are involved during query execution. So we require much less query response time. Here is another example for the CTPP dataset. Uh, we can see that the left graph shows the sum, sum size of 10K, the right is 100K. We can see that the for DBS using a 10K sample size, the relative error is around 3%, which is roughly the same as vertically using a 10K, a larger sample size, which is also around 3%. So this means that using a smaller sample size, DBS can give, give the comparable result uh, with the sample based method using a larger sample size. That's a big improvement. And also here we show the fourth group by, uh, we show the performance. We can see that the, here the sample size is fixed at a, temp at a 10K and the overall, the overall error for DBS is, is around 5%, while for vertex DB it is more than 10%. If we have a, uh, have a deep look into the details, we can see that. If this is the error histogram. The, uh, the error from DBS is around 5% and the variance is very small. But for sample-based method, we can see that. There's huge error for some groups. Here we show the result for John, uh, where the sample size uh, varies between 10K to 1 million, and uh, the sample size of verdict B is 10 million. It is the recommended uh, sample size for verdict B. We can see that the accuracy that falls between 2% to 4%, but the query response time of verdict B is several, it's five or six, five or six seconds. But for DBS, it is only, if we see that, for DBS, for, if the 10K sample, 100K sample is used, the query response time is only 0 0.1 seconds. Here we show all the previous results, show the performance of DBS using one call only. Here we show the, the parallel version of DBS. We stress test the throughput performance of DBS. Uh, we fixed the net total number of queries, but changing the number of concurrent workloads. So we evaluate the total query response time. We can see that as the number of concurrent workloads increases, the total query response time drops significantly. However, for VertigDB, as all calls are used during query, ex during query execution, so there's no benefits for it. But DBS also has some limitations. For the, for the group by support, as the number of groups increases, we need to build more groups, so the model training time increases the query response time increases, and the space overhead increases. And uh, there's no error guarantee, and we are currently working on it. So here with DBS, uh, here we, can, we, we present DBS, a model-based AQP engine, using simple statistical machine learning models, which has much smaller query response time, higher accuracy, much smaller space time overhead and good scalability. And also, D 
DBS requires very low money investment. Future work includes more efficient support for joins. Currently, we, for joins, uh, we need joint pre-computation. And for categorical attributes, we might use more artificial neural networks and we need to improve the parallel DBS. Okay. And so, thank you. Thank you for the talk. Questions? One down there. Hello, thank you for your very interesting presentation. I would like to ask you two short questions. First question is about operators uh, for aggregation of min and max. Yes. Uh, would, did you experiment with them or do you have any support for that? Uh, yeah, that's for really interesting question. Yes, we do have um, analyze for min and max, but the error here, we show that the error cannot be reduced to such small error. So um, we are still currently working on to find models that can support mean and max. Okay, and a, s a second short question is, uh, did you try to experiment with multi-dimensional aggregates? Uh, currently all the experiments we are doing now is for the one dimensional, yes. Yeah, so we have not uh, tested on high dimensional now, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, another question? Thanks for the talk. Uh, I, I also have two questions. The first one is, I think for, so uh, other approaches for approximate query processing provide confidence intervals. So do you support uh, something in that direction? And the second question was more going towards the experiments. So if I understood correctly, so you need to first sample uh, from the underlying database, then build your model, uh, and you sample for each query predicate individually, right? Uh, so you build then the model and then you uh, answer the query. So you, the times you've shown, do they include the full pipeline from sampling to model building to query response or is it just the query response time on the model that you showed? So for two questions, the first one is about confidence intervals, the second about uh, Yes, okay. Yes, for the confidence interval, yes. I think if you, you only use the regression models, you can use the uh, confidence interval or prediction interval to give an estimate. Uh, but for if you use both the regression model and the density estimators, currently we are working on, uh, we are trying to build models to give the prediction. Yeah. Uh, but that would not be in the sense of a classical confidence interval, but we can take that offline. So the second question uh, regarding runtime, yeah, yeah. the experiments. Uh, Does your reported runtime include the model building and sampling, or are you just excluding it because you need to sample and build a model for every query predicate? So uh, I was yeah, so we do need we need to do um, max samples, yes, because. That's, that's uh, let, let me follow up on that question. W what is the overhead of building these models for being able to serve? The, the AQP uh, uh, yes. workloads you Firstly, have. Firstly, you need to max the samples. Then you need to build models on top of the samples. So that's everything. No, but in, in terms of percentage of execution time, like is it, uh, for, for instance, XGBoost is quite uh, slow and kernel methods are also very slow, so. Uh, it depends on the sample size because we use, we can use smaller sample size to give a very good prediction. So, a smaller sum size means a smaller, a simpler XGBoost model. So it will give the query response time is much faster. But if you train over millions or millions of records, yes, it will be very slow. But we are trying to use as simple models as possible to reduce the query response time. Okay, uh, one more question very quick down there so that we cover the back of the room as well. So could you explain some of the results against verdict DB where you're using the same amount of samples for something like the sum or average, but somehow your method is performing better? Because it seems like kind of impossible. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I do have the same concern before, but uh, in fact, as mod, even you, uh, as, let me give you an example. Assuming you are making samples 
of a data and some points are missing. If you build a regression model, you can give a very, very good prediction. But if you use a sample to give the prediction, you will return now. There's no value there, yeah. I guess my question is for when you're, because you're in, in your process, you're building a model off of samples. So if you take 10,000 or 100,000 samples, yeah. in both cases, right, the simplest regression model for the mean is just taking the mean. So like, where, where does that performance benefit, where is that performance benefit coming from? Sorry, can you say it again? Because to, to may, may, maybe let's take it offline so that we uh, yeah. run on time. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.